All right, so good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from everyone. My name is Jesse and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. If you're joining us for the first time, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. And before we got started with the broadcast, I thanked all our teachers live for joining in on World Teacher Day. Uh, if you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook, a huge thank you to you, two, you guys as well. We really appreciate you tuning in with us live on camera, on YouTube, Facebook, what have you, as we continue to highlight amazing people and places from across the globe. Uh, fun in that intro video too, I think we did session with half the people in that intro video just last week. So if you want to check out Philippe Cousteau, George Carunas, Toucan Rescue Ranch, some other amazing speakers, go back to last week's YouTube channel uh, and check that out. But today, I'm really excited for a number of reasons. We are diving back in with the Mosaic Arctic Expedition. So this is the largest Arctic expedition in history, an international team of scientists, uh, epic, uh, amazing ship, all sorts of cool research. We've done, I think, 15 broadcasts of them over the last year and a half. And this is a partnership between us and another amazing organization called Reach the World. So Reach the World does direct contact between explorers and, and kids around the globe. Uh, cool write-ups. They've got a beautiful site. In fact, I'll bring this up for you guys right now on the bottom of your screen. So Reach the World has been a huge partner of ours in highlighting and showcasing the Mosaic Expedition. And we are thrilled to help them with these live broadcasts. So today, we are being joined from Bavaria in southern Germany, one of the most beautiful places in the world, by Laura Schmidt. So she is a polar bear guard, a safety and logistics expert. She helped make sure that this amazing team of scientists was safe um, at the top of the world where there are a lot of dangers, not just the weather, but the top land carnivore on this planet, polar bears. So she's going to talk about her own career path uh, as a guide and all the amazing stuff she's gotten to do up in the Arctic, how she ended up on Mosaic, and what the expedition was all about. So without further ado, thank you so, so much for joining us today, Laura, and uh, take us away. Hey, um, thank you, Jesse, for introducing myself, and hello, everybody. Um, I'm really excited to join this broadcast, and yeah, well, um, we have about 20 minutes time, and I um, first introduce myself, and um, yeah, let's start with that before we go to the expedition. So I'm Laura, and from South Germany, I live in the German Alps. Uh, in a little part called Bavaria and yeah I'm actually a geographer so I studied geography and my point of view was glaciology yeah and I, I fall in love with um, uh, the glaciers and especially with the Arctic so that's why I ended up um, also as a tour guide uh, in Greenland and Spitsbergen so I um, show you first some pictures and how I get there because um, yeah, to, to be a part of Mosaic or to be a team member of um, the safety and logistic team um, requires that you are able to handle arrival or that you um, know how, how it is to meet um, a polar bear, for instance. So just a um, second. Um, do you see that? Yeah, we're perfect. We've got okay. a beautiful uh, ice sheet, glacier. <laughs> All right, because I can't see you and it's a bit uh, confusing. So, um, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I actually, to be honest, I, I lost my, my heart in the north. Um, it's, it's so beautiful and you can feel the presence. And when you watch um, the icebergs like here in Greenland, then you feel totally humbled. And that's why I, I promised myself, oh my God, I have to to go there much more often and to learn more about um, the ice and um, the culture of the Inuit, for instance. Um, it's really beautiful. So um, I ended up in uh, East Greenland as a tour guide. And um, yeah, here you can see some pictures. Um, we were here um, hiking through a beautiful landscape at uh, Amasalik, it's a little island at the east side of Greenland. Greenland, East Greenland is also called um, Tunu, which means um, the backside of East Greenland. Yeah, just some pictures here. We are standing at the very beginning of the inland ice sheet uh, where we also slept for one night. Yeah, that's... Uh, Actually, that was a part, uh, as I told you before, to get to this expedition um, because I am a tour guide for Greenland since uh, 2013 and my very first time in East Greenland 
uh, was in 2011 uh, with university. I'm also very interested in uh, the life of the Inuit. It's uh, very interesting because they are, yeah, they have, uh, they are struggling a lot uh, due to modernization. And yeah. And um, what I also do is um, talking um, about the wildlife of, of the Arctic. For instance, here you can see um, a reindeer or the polar fox, as well as the polar bear. And we come to this amazing animal um, later. And um, yeah, some walruses. So, but uh, I don't want to bore you with that. And uh, let's go to the mosaic expedition. Yeah. Um, I am um, was part uh, during like four. It's a time period uh, in summer, so um, I didn't experience the darkness, but I um, experienced uh, with the team the brightness. So um, we didn't. Uh, yeah, we, it was really totally bright every day, but also um, mostly foggy. I think we had ninety percent fog, and that was a bit exhausting. So um, yeah, what. What was what was the part of what is is the duty of uh, the team safety and logistics? So, um, first we we were eight uh, internationals from everywhere from France, from Denmark, from Norway, and um, we had actually um, three three tasks as a polar bear guard. So there was the bridge watch, um, which means we had to coordinate the teams on the ice. Then there was the ice watch, so um, we had to to be with the scientists um, at each station and to look out, just to look for three hours. Or um, sometimes when we when we walked around the mosaic flow, or when we had to fly to other flows close by, then um, yeah. We um, had our little hikes, and but we had uh, to keep our eyes all the time open. And then there was also the stern hut. It was, um, yeah, at the stern of the ship, because um, the bridge watch um, could not um, see everything. Um, so um, that's why it was um, important to have the stern watch as well. Okay. Um, Oh, well, this picture is, <laughs> yeah, um, this was a, a part of my team because it was, um, it take a, a lot, uh, it took a lot of time um, to, to get to Polar Stern because um, um, Lex 3, the people of Lex 3 have been there already and we had to go there by a transit vessel. And instead of five days planned to get to Polar Stern, it took us three weeks. And we lived um, on a um, container or in a container because there was not that much space on this transit vessel. And I just wanted to show you this picture. This was like uh, the life on board. <laughs> we were training and hanging around, uh, waiting for Polar Stern. And when we finally arrived there, um, yeah, our mission and our work um, could start. So. This was um, finally my very first time on the ice. I was for sure very nervous. <laughs> and what you can see, what I'm wearing is a survival suit because um, yeah, uh, we are walking on the ocean actually. And um, to avoid to fall into the ocean and um, yeah, regarding to safety um, or reasons, we have to wear this survival suits and yeah, the polar bear guard has to bring the binoculars with for watching the environment and scanning the surroundings, as well as our um, flare gun and a signal pistol and the rifle. And yeah, I, I would like to say that the most important thing is or are your eyes and um, the binoculars. It's not the rifle because um, safety goes first, both for polar bears and scientists. And um, sometimes people maybe get a wrong impression when you see the guys walking with the rivals. But it's 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 not about the rival. It's about um, being awake <laughs> and aware all the time. So this was the very first time 
um, on on the ice. Yeah. And um, I was walking with scientists to uh, Malt Pond because they were studying Malt Ponds. And then um, I was standing there for three hours and that's it. And here, um, since I'm back, I think, oh my God, how did I enter and sit uh, <laughs> focusing three hours on the ice? But um, because you're not distracted by anything else, because there is just... I say it uh, the great white nothing with um, much fog <laughs> in between. Um, you you can um, focus much easier because you have to focus and because there could be a polar bear. Okay, um, this was um, with Thomas uh, on the bridge of Polar Stern. As I told you before, um, yeah, um, uh, when we are when we have been at bridge we were coordinating the teams on the ice which means everybody who left um, the bridge has to call us via the, the VHF radio and said uh, uh, I mean the ship hey um, bridge uh, bridge bridge please um, make sure that we are in the trip lock system team ice or team eco are heading out now we are out from 9 to 12 and we call back if we arrive um, at the ship then I say oh all right I can see you have a safe have a safe trip and take care um, yeah and that's it and what you can see in the pictures I'm showing um, Thomas um, on on this flow map it was called the flow map where these teams are on this special day yeah and here you can see a team um, leaving the gangway and always when they left the gangway they had to call and to inform us i mean bridge because it was very important to have an overview and to know who is out there with who yeah here um, you can see me standing on the ice and um, scanning the surrounding with the binocular and um, that was uh, sometimes really exhausting especially during um, foggy conditions because then actually the binoculars were, were not really useful <laughs> and um, you really had to focus because even if you didn't see a polar bear since days, you have to remind yourself that there could be a polar bear. And um, so, um, I mean, the key word is really focusing, focusing and concentrating. Yeah, and during conditions like this, you can see here the great white nothing and the blue sky. It's actually easy or easier to, to watch the surrounding and the environment because um, yeah you can see really far and it gives you it makes you a bit uh, yeah or it relieves you to know okay I can see something <laughs> and then you know you have the support from the bridge and yeah and from the stern and from other teams on the ice yeah um, also we um, flew sometimes when the weather conditions were good to um, other ice flows nearby our mosaic home flow where also um, scientific stations were or were built up and then um, yeah we got a little um, helicopter introduction how how to to fly with this helicopter and and so on and yeah this was also very exciting for us because everybody likes to fly actually with a helicopter. Also the scientists. <laughs> okay, here you can see us um, also during good weather conditions because most of the pictures were taken during those conditions <laughs> uh, for sure. Um, it's Jonathan and Radians from Colorado. Um, they are from the atmosphere. And yeah, this is Drone Village at uh, and you can see also the mosaic flow was very stable during this uh, time. It was at the beginning of June. And yeah, I think that they really had the best job actually during this expedition because Jonathan was always flying the drone <laughs> and they were sitting in the, this uh, 
I mean, uh, chairs and yeah, it was it was fun. And um, yeah, what you can see on my suit um, is on the left side, this throwback, which um, it was necessary to take that with, for instance, if somebody would break through the ice, I mean, just if you can throw this throwback, there's a, a rope inside this bag and then you can help um, your team and yeah, your, I say, family members to get out of the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, and this was um, at the very end um, of our mosaic flow before it fell apart, maybe two weeks before it fell apart. And you can see um, Jakob and me walking the transect. It was my favorite task, actually, because we were, it was like a little hike around the mosaic flow. And here you can see us walking through melt ponds and on the back side or bit behind the, the picture, um, you can see um, the open water actually. And it was a bit scary because um, I always thought, oh my God, please don't uh, let me fall into this mud <laughs> uh, ponds or through this mud ponds. Yeah. And yeah, so you had to focus on your, uh, you have to watch your feet and you have to watch your surrounding as well. Uh, so yeah you were very focused on both. All right. This was also during uh, the transect. So you can see the mud ponds. And we were talking about polar bears. Um, during our leg, we had, um, I think, um, almost um, three, uh, 30, Sightings. So we had um, with the cups more than 30 polar bears uh, we really saw. And luckily, um, the most of the polar bears um, were, yeah, we saw the most from the safety position on the ship. And that was actually really very um, lucky. Yeah, it was it was good. Uh, we didn't have that much encounters on the ice. I mean, we had some encounters, I guess, during our period, three or four encounters, but um, we handled it in a very safe way. So the polar bears were not that close and we had to use our flare gun to, to chase them away just um, three times. And I am and we are really happy and actually lucky about it. So on this picture, you can see our first um, sighting. It was a mom with her little cup and it's a spring cup. It's very, very small and they were very curious. I mean, I would also be very curious um, when there is this strange big ship with this strange and weird people on the ship in this great white nothing. Um, environment and they were very curious and yeah also here you can see a long, young polar bear also very very close um, on the ship and yeah actually um, this is uh, the end of this presentation I also have some videos but I would like to introduce my um, team this was one of uh, the fun part <laughs> uh, I told you we had almost 90% um, of foggy conditions and um, we were very happy to take our team picture during um, yeah, good conditions. And um, this was also um, at the very end of, <laughs> of uh, the life of our mosaic flow. And we were for a very short time in the smell pond for this um, team picture. and. Um, I think it's it's time to answer some questions. Maybe I have time to show you um, some videos also of polar bears. Um, yeah. 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 Well, first of all, what a beautiful presentation, Laura. Thank you so, so much. But we do have time for videos. If you want to show us those clips, uh, you can bring those up right away. Go for it. All right. Just a second. Take your time.
While you're doing that, I'll just say for people on YouTube, uh, it's been great. We've had a few people letting me know where they're joining from. Some great questions already, so I'm excited to dive in. And for all our teachers, I hope your thinking caps are on and you've got some queries for Laura in a minute. But yes, let's bring up our video and uh, go for it. Let's start. I start with the uh, first one. So you can see here the mom, the curious mom with the cup. Yeah, it was really beautiful and yeah, I, I'm really happy to experience that and I show you another one. It's a mom with um, two bigger cups. So you can see they were smelling us and um, yeah, for sure, very, very curious. All right. Awesome. Well, you can exit screen share if you want, Laura, come back so you can make sure you can see us and we'll dive in with questions. So I'm going to go to our live classes in just a minute, uh, but I want to welcome in classes in or, or people coming in in New York, across Ontario, uh, in Vishakhapatnam, all the way in India. And so I want to share our question from uh, our Indian student, Akash, uh, Laura, to begin us off. And I love it. So you talked about focus and, and being sort of really in the moment this whole time and you're looking out for polar bears and you're looking in this big white landscape. That's a That can be a stressful experience. So Akash wanted to know, did you feel very tense till the end of the expedition? And what did you do to, to control your stress? <laughs> okay, what did I do first? I am um, very active and I had to run almost every day on a treadmill because it was the... Um, yeah, the only opportunity to make sport. <laughs> so that's my way to reduce stress running and running because at home I do a lot of mountain sport. And I have to say that um, you live with it. When you are here in, in our world, then you think, oh my God, polar bears, what should I do? But when you are there and when you are in this surrounding, you're much more relaxed because I think. You know, um, you uh, focusing is, is training and how do I explain it? I, um, I learned that especially during self-quarantine because um, yeah, due to um, COVID, uh, this uh, leg four was not very certain. And I put myself under self-quarantine for months before we went to, to quarantine for two weeks in a hotel before we got to Polarstern. So I had much time to focus and to learn to endurance things. As well as uh, I am doing a lot of yoga and meditation. And uh, you do that actually as well, um, yeah, um, during, um, during your time on the ice, you have to focus and um you have to live with it so it is what it is it's stressful but um when you i'm sure to handle situations and you can avoid situations because you have the bridge watch you are not alone you have always to remind yourself you are not alone you have the team with you and that helps a lot it's always about the team yeah, yeah. That's a great answer. In fact, it's funny that uh, we, we deal with a lot of people in very stressful situations in this broadcast and consistently it's preparation, working with a team and exercise that seem to get people through it. So I'm really glad you touched upon all of that, Laura. All right, I'm gonna go to Mr. Baccia's class live in Toronto, Ontario. If you have a question, uh, I know you do from the chat bar, come on in and share with us. Hi, um, 
Lily in my class wonders how cold is the water? Tell me, Mr. Yes, I saw your question. Oh my God! Actually, um, I don't um, know exactly. During summertime, it's maybe plus um, between one and um, five degrees cold. So you you would not survive that long without a survival suit. And also with a survival suit, you will uh, recognize it very soon that it's getting cold and bad. So it's it's not uh, it would be better not to not to get into this ocean. <laughs> yeah. And let that be a lesson to you. I've been in 14 degrees Celsius water before and it knocks the wind out of you. So one to five is uh, pretty brutal. Great question, Lily. Thanks so much. All right, I'm going to go to Miss Gully's class in Ewing in Virginia. If you guys have a question for us, come on. Go ahead, over here. Over to your camera. Over to your camera. <laughs> Thank you, John. Come on up, man. What are some of the ways animals hide and protect themselves in the surrounding Arctic environment? Good question. Okay, um, can you repeat because I yeah. didn't. So Laura, the question is, how do animals protect themselves and hide in this Arctic environment? You showed this incredible landscape. So if I'm an animal and I'm trying to hide from a predator or protect myself, what do I do? Um, yeah, it depends. If you are the polar bear, uh, it's a good question actually. If you are the polar bear, you don't have to protect yourself uh, because um, you're the strongest animal on the ice and um, you just, if you are the mom of two cups, you have to protect your cups because um, after they um, gave birth to their cups, they hide themselves in snow caves until um, April. And then it could be dangerous for the cups because um, some polar bears, I mean men, could kill the little cups. Um, because they are hungry, they're very hungry and they have to find seals. And then we come to the other animals because they have to hide themselves. Um, the seals which are there, they have to take care of polar bears not to get eaten from them. But um, yeah, so um, they um, it's not uh, that easy because polar bears are very, um, very, very, very patient. So they also learn to focus. And those polar bears are waiting until um, the seals come out of the water for breathing or for sleeping on the ice. And um, yeah. And the whales actually, <laughs> yeah, they are there in the water. But up there in the high Arctic, it's about the seals. They have to hide themselves, and and that's it. Actually, the polar bears don't have; they don't have enemies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great question, guys. All right, um, I'm going to go to Albuquerque in just a minute. Uh, but we have a student waiting right at the camera in Port Elgin, Ontario, in Mr. Martell's class. So, uh, Mr. Martell, student, go for it. How? What was the coldest weather you faced while you were in Antarctica? Yeah, the coldest weather you faced, Laura. The, the coldest place where I have been or? Yeah, so when you were on the ship, what was the coldest the temperature got to? Oh my God, to be honest, I was happy to uh, to be there not during winter time. <laughs> um, the coldest temperature was, it was not that cold. It was between minus five and plus three or five degrees but it's always about the wind you know the wind chill when it's very very windy and the wind um yeah then you have a very cold feeling um you know what i mean and yeah. when you're standing there and the wind blows then you feel oh my god it has minus 20 degrees and and that's um that's that was exhausting but it was not that cold um yeah actually to be honest i experienced uh much colder temperatures uh, during my ski touring trips in the alps uh, the high winter <laughs> yeah but i uh during um the winter time of mosaic i mean especially during um december and march it was really really cold for those guys 
What yeah. I love about this, and it's, it's always nice to get to highlight this about the Arctic, is that so many people assume the Arctic is so cold all the time. And in some of our broadcasts, we've highlighted that it actually gets quite warm in some places. You have beautiful plant life in certain parts of the Arctic, not out on the sea ice, of course, but uh, it's neat, the idea of perpetual sunlight and perpetual darkness at different times of year. And so this is something that Matthew Shoup, uh, who joined us last week, talked about. He went there both during perpetual daylight time and perpetual dark. Um, and it's a very, very different experience on board the boat. There's some beautiful images in his presentation from last week that you guys should check out as well. All right, let's go to Desert Ridge Middle School in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Welcome in and uh, take it away. Hi, thank you. Um, my students were curious because we have many First Nations people in our community. We were wondering if you used any of the information that the elders might have taught you about the bears for your encounters with them. Uh, can you repeat the last sentence? Please? Yeah, so the, the question being is that uh, did you use any uh, information that elders, indigenous peoples of the north taught you? You taught, you started your presentation talking about your, your sort of fondness for Inuit culture and people. Did you use any knowledge that was derived from them to influence how you acted with polar bears on the Mosaic expedition? Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing is, it's totally different in Greenland than on the Arctic Ocean because um, also regulations are very, very different. Um, the Arctic Ocean, it's, it's very strictly prohibited um, to, um, to kill a polar bear. But for instance, I hope I answered the question correctly. Please correct me if I missed the question um, because I'm not sure if I got it. Yeah. Um, the, so yeah. The, the question's more, so here, we'll bring back in our, our teacher if you wanna explain a little further. <laughs> We have many First Nations students here. Yeah. So they were curious when you brought up the fact that you spoke and dealt with the elders of the Inuit. Um, what insight did they give you for when you dealt with bears? Okay, now I got it. Um, sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah it's, I'm not a native speaker, so sometimes it's not that easy. Um, okay, yeah, uh, it's interesting because for the Inuit, uh, Greenland, it's uh, especially for the hunters, a polar bear is a trophy, you know. For them, it's, it's, um, they are hunters. It would be the best um, to kill a polar bear, but actually it's, it's not allowed. And um, I met some hunters and they said they um, are allowed to kill a polar bear just um, five during a year. Um, but um, I also met um, an Inuit, he's a good friend of mine, and I asked him, how do you um, feel with uh, polar bears? And he said, oh my God, I'm so scared. I would run away if I see, if I would see a polar bear. And um, it's, it's different, but um, they, um, yeah, and, and other, other Inuits are, um, who are, um, yeah, still um, very deep connected with their culture um, they see they appreciate a polar bear because um, it's, it's it comes from shamanism you know and for them it's 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 a really um, important and strong animal and even if they kill a polar bear like when they are killing a whale they um, would say thank you yeah yeah yeah. That's what I learned. Yeah. But it's just a very, very, very piece of uh, yeah, of, of the entire culture. <laughs> yeah. We're really excited, not just this month. Uh, this month we will be highlighting uh, oh geez, Secret Path with the Gore Downey Cheney Winjack Fund. So we did this last year with 14 sessions with amazing indigenous speakers from around the world. So I checked to make sure you can sign up for those as soon as we uh, started putting them up. Um, and Arctic stories in general. We love touching upon Inuit culture. It's such a beautiful culture. There's so much rich history there. And we have a partnership with the Arctic Institute of North America soon to run a series uh, featuring stories from the North that hopefully are gonna touch upon that in a really big way. So I love the question. Thank you guys so, so much. Um, for people on YouTube, if you wanna keep sharing questions, go for it. We'd love to see what you guys have there. But I will go back through with our live classes, starting with Mr. Boccia's group. Uh, come on in and uh, go for it. There we go. Oh, it's thinking about it. Maybe 
Okay, so for whatever reason, Mr. Bocci, your camera's frozen, so we'll go to Mr. Martell's student, who's sitting right at my camera. Go for it. How are the conditions on the ship? Yeah. How the conditions have been on the ship? Yeah, how are the conditions? What's it like being on the ship, Laura? Uh, you mean the life on the ship? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, I say it was industrial romantic, because you are uh, somewhere in nowhere <laughs> um, you have the white surrounding around you and this industrial ship and it was it was um, weird at the beginning and because you uh, you cannot run out you have to live there and um, but you get used to it so I shared my cabin for three months with now she's really a good friend of mine with Teresa from Czech Republic and you're never alone. So um, that's why it is very, very important to have a good team around you. And um, our leg was called the, the hugging leg because we were hugging all the time because we were so happy um, to be tested negative <laughs> due to COVID. And um, it's always about a team. If the team does not work, then I think, to be honest, um, it could be very um, exhausting to live on a ship. But it was, we had meals three time um, during the day. So it started break with breakfast at 7.30. Then we had um, lunch at 12. And every day cake time um, at around 3.30. And dinner at um, 6. And after dinner, we had at 6.30 every day a general meeting. Very planned the next day. And the structure, to have a structure, was very important because it is important to have a structure. And then, for instance, we also watched some movies in the so-called cinema room. There was a cinema room and we watched some movies like Apollo 13 <laughs> or Kung Fu Panda. And um, yeah, we were socializing, hanging around. I used the gym always, um, yeah, almost every day, and, and that was the life on a ship. Yeah, I it would be an extra lecture just to talk about ship life. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we love it. If you ever want to come back, you're welcome. as the flowers in May. Um, I love that. So the, the solution to keeping calm and, and having these great relationships is Kung Fu Panda and cake time. So let that be a lesson to all our, our kids joining. I love these stories where people get to be interacting for long periods of time. We've had astronauts on our program. We've had people on Arctic expeditions, people at the bottom of the ocean. And those sort of re that relationship buildup is always the most important part. And I love when we can highlight that. So thank you so much, Laura. All right, we're going to take two more questions. We're going to go to Miss Gully's class and we'll wrap up with one from Mr. Boccia's group. Uh, so Miss Gully, come on back up if you have a question and go for it. How often do polar bears come toward the ship with the intent to attack? Oh, so there you go, Laura, if you missed that, how often do polar bears come towards the ship with the intent to attack? Oh my god. Um, I don't, I'm not in the brain of the polar bear, <laughs> but um, I don't think that they want to attack, to be honest. The thing is that polar bears are curious. They are just really very, very curious because I would also be very curious if I, I told you before, if I would see weird humans walking around there. Um, but it's not, it's not that they come to, that they think, oh my God, a ship, I would like to attack. It's not about that. They're very curious. Um, we had to avoid the situation that they will become much more curious. So sometimes we um, had to chase them away with the signal pistol, I mean with the flare gun, because it's important that they are not, um, that they think, ah, now I know the ship and I'm, I'm used to it. Um, let's see what those guys are doing now. Um, right. We had to avoid that. But in general, a polar bear is, just curious and um, I think when they attack, they must be very, very, very hungry for and um, didn't find food for a very long time. Yeah. yeah. 
I love that you touched upon this. So this is something that we deal with in shark presentations too, and people talk about shark attacks and the shark out for bloodlust. And the animals are just curious. If we're curious about something, we can ask questions, we can have conversations, we can pick up something with our hands. Well, these animals, which happen to be very large predators, their way of interacting with the world might be with their teeth. And so if you respect animals, if you give them space, if you make sure that they know that this isn't an area that they should be hanging around, you avoid those sort of negative interactions. You avoid having a problem come up uh, in the first place so that's what your your role was and uh you did a very good job so uh great question guys yeah uh, mr botches class if you want to wrap us up with a question come on back in and uh go for it hi i just had one from my class which is did you witness Unmute yourself. did you witness any fights between polar bears yeah i can any fights between polar bears laura oh no i've never seen a fight between polar bears luckily or unfortunately but um, I saw um, a polar bear um, killing a seal. Yeah. Did you really? That's really cool. Like from the ship? Uh, yes, and in Greenland. But I was actually very sad for the seal and happy for the polar bear. But <laughs> um, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's but it, it's nature. Yeah, it's what it is. <laughs> It's, it's a bittersweet experience, and whenever we have people that work with predators, they pretty much always feel that way. It's such a, a unique experience to get to see something like that. But um, well, one day, I mean, not that we want polar bears to be fighting, because we want as many polar bears uh, to be happy and healthy as possible. But it's quite the experience. Uh, again, I'd recommend to our classes check out the Planet Earth of the World, Planet Earth Two, Blue Planet. There's some amazing uh, polar bear footage in those by the BBC uh, and more. So I encourage you to check that out online. One thing before we wrap up to Laura, I wanna bring up on the screen uh, Mosaic Expedition's website on the bottom of our screen. If you're joining live or on YouTube, check that out. You can learn so much more about all the work that was done and is being done on the ship. And then, as I said, this is a joint Reach the World presentation. So if you go to Reach the World's page about the Mosaic Expedition, you'll learn even more. Uh, and we hope you do so to wrap up the broadcast. Laura, this was so much fun. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, and uh, thank you for contacting me, Jesse. <laughs> My pleasure. So what we do at the end of every presentation is I'm going to demute the microphones and bring in our teachers. So Mr. Martell, Miss Gully, and Mr. Baccia, if you want to join me, a big thank you uh, to Laura before we let her go. Thank you so much, guys. You guys can say goodbye. Bye.